How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now I want to walk you through three different options you have for fixing a pinhole leak in a copper water line. None of these are going to include having to desolder or solder new fittings. And we'll start off with a temporary fix just to minimize the damage and then work our way into permanent fixes. But these are all approachable for DIYers. And with a little knowledge and a few skills, you can save yourself hundreds or even thousands of dollars in this type of issue. Now here's the scenario I was facing. Walked down in the basement and saw these large water spots on the ceiling. Just started to cut things open with a jab saw, taking my time, didn't want to damage anything, but wanted to find the source of that leak so I could get it stopped. This is what I found. I can see one little drop in the middle there. There's the active leak that's starting to get worse, and there's another drop on the right-hand side. So our first fix is fast but temporary. It is a clamp with a piece of rubber and they make a bunch of different sizes, some for copper pipes or others like this one for a cast iron pipe. Just keep in mind, if you get the cast iron pipe and you use it on copper like I am, you actually need to get the half inch size even though my line here is three quarters of an inch copper because cast iron has a larger outside diameter. So you just tighten this up, taking your time and it'll continue to leak until you get to that point where the rubber is completely sealing around your pinhole leak and then you'll see it stop slow and you can really dry that off to make sure that you completely stopped your water leak. Moving on to fix number two, this is a permanent fix and we'll start off by shutting off our main water shutoff valve and then going to the lowest point in your home and open up a faucet or a shower whatever that is, and drain down the water as much as possible to help reduce the mess in this part of the project. Fix number two is gonna use one of my favorites for DIYers, that's a shark bite. Now this is their generation one, and we're used to seeing these little inserts in here, because shark bite works for PEX, CPVC, and copper, and these inserts were to reinforce PEX a little bit more. Now in most stores, you'll find the new Max version of shark bite. So this is obviously a three quarter inch to fit our water line here that we need to repair, but there are no inserts needed. This can also hold quite a bit more pressure and it's supposed to be easier to insert than the old versions, which was honestly one of the leading costs. People would push it in, they'd get resistance, and then they wouldn't push it far enough so it would result in leaks. So my plan of attack is to show you two examples. I'm gonna cut right along the line here for this one small little pinhole that was forming. This was our most active leak here, and then we had a secondary one. So I'm gonna use a slip coupling, which is just gonna give me enough clearance. So I gotta cut right at that failure point because I need an inch and a quarter of the three quarter inch copper to insert into, this is the stop end of the slip joint and this is the slip end. So you're able to insert it on, move it out of the way and then get your pipe lined up and then insert it back in. Pressing down on this release tool allows you to move it. So that's the beauty of the slip joint. It gets you out of a pickle, especially when you have no movement in your line and you need to get it installed. It also is gonna allow me to cut out a section of pipe covering both of those failure points. And then my O-rings are gonna be located here and here. So then that will seal here and then further down here to make sure it's a watertight seal. This one, because it's a point failure, I'm just gonna use a coupling and I'm gonna position that right in the middle and then mark my depths for the insertion using the play that we create when we cut this section out to put this one in first. This is my go-to for cutting open the copper pipes. It's the auto cut tool. It's nice in these tight spaces. A normal pipe cutter, you couldn't get the rotation because it'd start hitting those other, like the half inch copper line right behind it. So this one's pretty compact. And don't forget, you need your bucket ready to go when you open that up. So let that drain out and we'll make our second cut, removing that section that had the two different failure points in it. And then once that is removed, then we'll let it drain down and move on to that final cut in the background there. Now you can reference links in the descriptions like the auto cut tool, just for your reference, if it'll help out on your own projects. Okay, now we need to ream the inside and outside. This is my preferred tool because it has both of them in one and it's also a compact package. So I'll go ahead and do that on both of the sides here. We do not want any slivers, any metal 
spurs, copper burrs that could damage the O-rings in the shark bites. Very important. So you go ahead and do that and then just use a towel to try to pull out any of those copper slivers inside the pipe. Using the shark bite tool, I will mark the depth, and this is very important because this is gonna give me the gauge on how deep I need to push in those fittings. It is also a deburring tool. So it will deburr the outside of your copper pipes, not the inside. If you wanted to do that, you'd also need a deburring pen like this, where you could work around on the inside and pull off any of those copper slivers with your towel, making sure your pipes are clean. Once that's good, you'll press on your shark bites. This one's giving me a little resistance. Remember, we need to go to that mark. That is the leading cause of failure is when you get the resistance and you do not push to your mark. So it's very important that you do that. Then with the slip coupling, I'll go past and then use that three quarter inch release tool on the slip side to put it in place. Now I'll go turn the water back on. You'll hear things pressurize up. I'm running water at different faucets to give it a go. And then here's the result. Everything looks good and we have no more leaks. Now the only other thing I will do is shark bites will stay on the pipe, but they're not a rigid connection. So I have a little bit of misalignment there where I do wanna provide some support to the slip joint to make sure the pipe coming in and then that T are parallel to each other and there's no slight angle to the shark bite fitting. This would help to reduce any chance of leaking in the future. Now I would feel comfortable with the shark bite as my permanent solution. Let me know in the comments, do you trust the shark bites or no way? Because I know there is some mixed feelings out there. Now our third example is what you'd probably get if you called in a professional plumber. Now I will admit, if you have years and years and years of experience soldering or sweating copper pipe, that is the best way to go. You're not gonna beat a properly soldered fitting, but just know if you call in a professional, there's a good chance that they're not going to sweat the fittings on. They're actually gonna use one of these, which is a copper press fitting. Now there's two different makers in my area. Nibco makes this one that I can get from Menards, and then Viega is a little bit more of the known brand. You might hear Pro Press every once in a while, so they also have their fittings and they are very similar with the Viega being just a bit smaller. So the key to these, as you can see inside, there are O-rings. So that is what's actually gonna be sealing. I'd say one advantage that these press fittings would have over shark bites is the shark bites actually have a stainless steel ring in there with shark teeth, right, teeth on it, that keep it on the pipe. That's actually what keeps it in place. And then that's what we actually release when we wanna move those fittings with the release tool. So it doesn't really give you a structural connection. We saw that where we needed to kind of support that slip joint because it can bend a little bit as the shark bite is not really a rigid connection. Well, these and the press that you'll do does give you a little bit more of a rigid connection and then that O-ring does the sealing. Most professionals in my area are switching to these guys. Now, the reason why they're usually not DIY friendly is because the crimper tool itself costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Just know, depending on the size of your city, you might be able to go to rent one of those for $100 or $150 per day to knock out your project. Or there is another alternative that I'm gonna actually use. And I'll show you that right now by doing the third fix, removing the shark bites and then using press fittings in place to get this all buttoned up. Now, if you remember three quarters of an inch shark bite fittings need inch and a quarter of copper clearance. This only needs seven eighths of an inch for the Viega or the Nimco, either one. So that is an advantage if you're limited on how much clean copper you have. And just note, these couplings do not have a stop within them. So we'll start crimping. And because I'm using this manual crimper, I'm taking my time making sure I don't move the coupling before I crimp. You do not wanna crimp it in the wrong location because you would have to cut off that fitting. Here's a little different look on the second crimp. You're gonna need to extend out these handles and you need that leverage to get the full crimp on the three quarters of an inch fitting. Now moving on to another one, I just wanna show you, you need space, right? You have to get those handles out and here I was able to crimp it with just one of those handles extended. Now our last crimp here, again, take your time, make sure you're not moving the coupler around, extend out those handles and then do the final press to get all the way pressed down for a watertight seal. Then you'll release those jaws and here's the results of the work. Pretty clean, 
All crimps are where I wanted them and the water is back on, proving that we have no leaks and this will stay as my permanent solution. And now just a little closer look at the tool. This is from iWiz or iCrimp. You can get it on Amazon. And the total cost of this, it comes with a three quarter inch one we just used and then a one inch and a half inch. So you can go up to one inch, down to half inch. It's gonna cover pretty much anything we find in our homes. That was the jaws that we showed there. If you actually loosen it up, you can see it does pivot so you can get into different scenarios. And then you saw that these handles will extend out to give you some more leverage. Now, is this as easy as the Rigid or Milwaukee or DeWalt professional grade crimping tool? Not even close. It is way harder to crimp and you do need some clearance, but this price is about $150. That would be the price of like a one day rental on the professional grade. You can get this. That is what I did. So you'll see a link in the description. I got this a couple years back and then I just have it in my arsenal. So whenever I have the right scenario where I want to do the pro press or the Nimco press fittings, I have this ready to go. And then I don't have to worry about renting that tool. I have what I need to get the job done. So now at least for my water leak and issue, it has stopped. So that part's done, but I got quite a bit more work to do. I didn't just want to give you my opinion. So I also pulled the audience and here's the results right here. When the audience had to select from SharkBite, ProPress, soldering, or calling a plumber when facing a very similar issue. So you can take that information so you guys can make the best choice for your own projects. But let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or just what your opinion is for these type of projects, whether you're a DIYer or a professional plumber. Now for your home, if you have a multi-turn gate or glow valve for your main water shutoff, you can check out this video right here because most of the times when you touch those valves, they start leaking, but there are a few things you can do to correct that. If you want to upgrade that, a good upgrade is a ball valve. Check out this video right here where we use that same crimping tool to upgrade from a multi-turn to a ball valve. And then this entire project, getting everything from seeing the water stain in the ceiling to getting back and painting the ceiling after the repair, check out this video right here. I'll walk you from start to finish. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.